Amen. Wow. That's awesome. And the word of God still works, folks. You know, you can't replace what's real. You could try it, and they try it all the time. You know, you, you go shopping, and they've got something on the shelves that's all artificial to come up with that, that so-called flavor. Why do I need 14 chemicals to make up lemon? Why not just buy lemon? Seems a little better to do that. But, you know, we serve a real God. He is a very real prayer answering God. I, I'm thankful. I don't know how anybody goes in a minute without him. It's like, it's like, how long can you hold your breath for? You know, however long that is, you're, you're lucky to make it to that end. That's, that's, that's exactly it. Moment by moment, that's how much we need God in every single moment of our lives. Let's take our Bibles, if you would, please. We're going to go to Psalm chapter 20. Psalm chapter 20. I'm going to just uh, read the chapter here. It's nine verses. Beginning in verse 1. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God will we set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save. Lord, let the king hear us when we call. What a great, what a great chapter that is. You realize we read a whole chapter just now. Didn't that take a long time? <laughs> sometimes those, those, uh, those chapters are shorter. Sometimes they're extra long, but it, it, it's, it's, all the, the message that's contained is amazing. So tonight, for what time uh, that the Lord will give me this evening, I want to teach on the day of trouble. We all know that there's days of trouble, amen? Uh, you, can't, you can't avoid it. If you haven't hit one yet, br brace yourself, it's coming. Uh, but the day of trouble. Heavenly Father, please be with us now. Bless your word as it goes forth. Lord, help me or your messenger to deliver the word as you would have me to. Clear my heart, clear my mind. Help me to focus, focus only on the task at hand, Lord. Enable me, empower me, Lord. I pray you'd open our hearts and minds to receive it, that it would be beneficial to us tonight. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that you're here. We're thankful for each one who is here uh, and those that are watching. I pray that, that everyone would receive a blessing tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is, of course, a psalm of, uh, this is a psalm of David. And uh, if, you, if you look at the way that it's, uh, that it's listed, usually like, I don't know how your Bible is, but mine under right underneath it, it tells you, uh, it says, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. This was meant to be another song in Israel. These nine verses uh, is meant to be a song. So it's, it helps to clarify the context of the psalm. I want to introduce this psalm by looking at some individual words in this, uh, in verse 1, and that is in the day of trouble. 
Now, David, because of his greatness in the sight of the Lord, his position in the nation of Israel, he was a man of many troubles. He had a lot of issues. He had a lot of problems. Some troubles that he had were relatively small and easily managed. So our, our, our lives kind of fall into that same pattern of ups and downs and sometimes sideways and diagonal. You know, uh, we've all had those. Yeah, it's not just the four directions. I've been pulled, I've been pulled this way and that way at the same time and then shot diagonal. So, uh, you know, we have that that goes on. These troubles, this is a way of life. It's a way of life, and, and it's not exclusive just to Christians. Uh, those that are unsaved as well, they also experience those ups, those downs, those, those diagonals, if you will. Uh, we're, we're all having these issues. Uh, of course, we have a help in that time of trouble, whereas they, may, that, that they don't. They don't have that help. If they don't have Jesus, they don't have the help that they need. See, that's the only thing well, why we say that, you know, I'm a sinner saved by grace, but the only difference, uh, you know, I'm not better than anybody. I'm just better off. That's what we mean by that. Because when I do get into a fix, guess what? I have help. My help cometh from the Lord. And so uh, David knew this as well. So, uh, you know, and I often say, we often say that life is hard, so we got to get used to it. Life's so full of, of, of ups and downs and these mountains and valleys are what make the child of God grow. See, we need to be appreciative of the valleys because it's in the valley that we actually get to know God. We experience God's glory and we bask in it on the mountaintop when things go good, when they go right. Uh, everybody loves when it goes right, amen? I mean, how can you not? What's wrong with you if you don't like when it goes right? So, but it's when things go wrong that we spend more time with God because you know what? The valleys are, way, look how much bigger a valley is than a mountaintop. Mountaintop. Short little peak. Valleys can oftentimes even be miles long in between. And it's that, that valley where we spend the most time with God. We get to know him. We get to, to be in this thing. He's helping us through this. Now, the, the beautiful thing to the child of God about walking with God in, in the valley uh, such as it is, is the fact that we are actually cultivating that relationship with him. He is leading us. We're allowing him to guide us through the perils of that are in the valley. So there's safety, there's protection, but there's, there's also, you know, when somebody's able to get you out of a jam, you realize there's a special place of appreciation for that, for that whoever it is. Uh, I know that many people depend on this man right back here to get them out of a jam. And some jams are harder to get out than others, amen? But when it's all said and done, and you're left going, I had this giant issue, and now this issue is gone, wow. Wow that causes a wow moment. And you, at that, per, at that particular, because they're, they're with you every step of the way. I, I've watched him work. He, he's awesome. The way he's there with every step along the way and, and helping people uh, and guiding them through their issue and giving counsel and, and that kind of thing. It, uh, it, it makes for a great example uh, this evening because of the fact that when you see that, those people, that's, that's why they love you so much as they do. It's because, not that you weren't lovable before, but you've guided them through a paramount issue, and, that, and now they just saw no way out of it. See, sometimes you need what's called an expert guide. Not just anybody's going to get you through the jungle. 
You want somebody that knows that jungle inside and out. Well, guess what? You're not going to find anybody that knows everything and who is the perfect guide more than God. He will walk you through and navigate you through every single thing in your life if you let him. Now, don't we go on autopilot sometimes and then we realize, oh, now the jam I'm in is now worse because I was driving instead of God. We've all been there. Look, the text says the day of trouble. That implies that this is uh, that this day was not a normal troublesome day, but it was the day of trouble. The is a definite article implying that it was kind of a particular day of trouble, but also that it was possibly even one of a kind. Sometimes you have one of those days, and that's 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 what we're what we're seeing here. Now, this particular psalm, uh, it, it must, you know, whatever it is, must have been a doozy. We're not even told what it was uh, in 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 the scripture here. Uh, we're not told what that particular issue was, but it must have been pretty, pretty uh, big doozy. Uh, and the psalmist had cried out to the Lord, who is the only one who would be able to sustain him and secure him uh, in this hard time in, the, in, in this life. Now, my mind goes back to the oldest book in the Bible, which is Job. Job was a godly man. He was upright. He eschewed evil. He was a man that prayed for his family because he feared for them. Job 3.25 says, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. That's why he prayed so hard for his family. And then when the news comes that now his family is gone, the thing he feared most had come to pass. Chased and ran right up to him. And so he was a man who lost it all in just a few days. He was a man who, who did maintain his integrity through uh, this entire experience even when he physically suffered. In Job chapter 1, verse 20 through 22, it says, Then Job arose and rent, that means tore his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Whoa, hang on a minute. You just lost your family. You just lost all this stuff. The, the only, the, uh, in all of it, the only one he never lost was his wife. That's crazy. He lost all this, but what did he do? Yes, outward appearance of, 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 of sorrow. He, he ripped his mantle. He shaved his head. He fell down upon the ground, but he, he worshiped. He worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I can't, I can't hardly wrap my mind around that. Like, you know, it, 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 it's, it's hard to imagine hearing that your family is, is dead and died and worship God. Stop right where you're doing, drop, and just worship God because you would be in a basket case. You know, look at the Nealon family. They just lost, they just lost a, a, a whole bunch of people in a plane crash. And, of course, you're going to be upset, but Job was a different kind of guy. And he was on a level that we haven't even attained to. Because out of all the people in the earth, it was Job's name that came out of God's mouth. Hast thou considered my servant Job? There's none like him in all the earth. Think about that. I mean, wow, what a recommendation. That God picks you out of everybody in the world and uses it 
to throw it in the devil's face. Wow. And I find where David, and we're talking about David, one of his psalms, that when his first, that first child died, like he was, he was, he was uh, weeping in sackcloth and ashes, and because he he says, who knows if God will 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 will, will help in this situation or not? Who knows? But once that child died, he went, he washed himself, and he worshipped God. Another great example of uh, of what uh, uh, what we ought to uh, try to attain to. So. In the midst of the trials, Job said this in Job 14.1, that man is that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. One day may be that the day of trouble comes to us. So in this chapter in Psalm, there's some lessons taught that we can learn from the day of trouble. So and, and first of all, uh, in verse 1, it says, The Lord hear thee, the God of Jacob, defend thee. Notice that verse 1 is not a question. It is a statement. It is a fact. He didn't say, will God do this? Will God keep me? Will God hear me? Will God defend me? No. He flat out said he would. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob Defend thee. These are these are straightforward that he will do it. And so it's a fact. The Lord does hear us when we're in trouble. So we got to learn to pray early on in that trouble. Early is better. They that seek me early shall find me. That doesn't always necessarily just mean uh, up into the dawn hours early. It means early on, early on in your life, early on in the situation. And yes, it could, by all means, could be brought, grafted in early in the day, seeking before everything else. And we should. That really, we don't, we don't do what we should most of the time. You know, we, we ought to be seeking God early. We ought to get up. We ought to be, we ought to be getting ourselves uh, at least half awake, right? And, 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 and get to the, the business of getting a hold of God over our day's plans and over our day's things, submitting our plans to him. Think about that. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we said, God, this is what I feel that I need to do today, but not my will be done, but yours in all these plans. Lord, you know I've got this today. I've got to go to work today. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. But Lord, I want you to guide me through it all. And if any of these things I'm not supposed to do, Lord, guide me away. Give me a way out. Give me a route out and show me what you want me to do. Here's my plans that I have, but I want to know what your plans are. Include God in the beginning of your day whenever that might be. And so that's, a, that's an important thing. It really, really is. Now, in Proverbs 8, 17, we're, we're familiar with this. It says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Isaiah 55, 6, I mention this verse all the time. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. That, and that means you better call on him while, he might, while he's going to be found, which implies that there may be a time he won't be. Call on him while he is near. That means there may not always be a time that God is near. You got to get to him while he's here. While, get it while you can. Reach him while you can. Secondly, it says, send thee help from the sanctuary. Strengthen thee out of Zion. You know that help goes out from the sanctuary? Do you know that you're part of that help that goes out from the sanctuary? 
and you watching at home on Facebook tonight, we're sending you strength from the sanctuary tonight. We want you to be strong. We want you to have courage, to take heart. We want you uh, to, to prosper and be happy as well. The Lord will defend us when we're in trouble, so we need to trust him. Listen, God's plan, his will, and his timing are never wrong. So what we need to do is trust the Lord till the answer comes along. Just keep trusting him till that answer shows up. And yes, it may not always just go poof, here it is. You might have to wait for good things come to them that what on the Lord? Wait. Sometimes you have to wait for it. That's a common statement. You watch videos nowadays, wait for it. Here it comes. Wait for it. And then whatever it is, uh, then happens. But we're sending you strength and help from the sanctuary. Strengthen the out of Zion. We get so much help while in church. Learn to remain faithful to the house of God. And too often when life really comes down hard on us, it's easy to start skipping out. It's one thing if you can't because you're providentially hindered or you're, you're hindered by distance like some people are. They just live too far away, but they want to tune in, and that's great, and I love that. And they can't get here. So they need strength to go out. But at least you're here through, through the, the, the live. That, that's a great place to be. It, it's better to get strength that way than not at all. But so many times when things happen, they just, just totally... Church seems like it's the first thing to go. It's the first thing to go. All the spiritual stuff to be the first thing we discard. You know, like uh, if you've ever seen when uh, a boat is too heavy and there's a storm and they've got to throw stuff over to keep afloat. Well, you don't want to throw your most important, you, you know, you're not going to just drop the engine in the water. That's the thing that makes you go. You certainly don't want to be rowing in all this. Look, our spiritual lives, whether you realize it or not, that's your engine. That's what keeps you going. That's what keeps you going. And, and it seems like when troubles hit, that's the first thing we do is we unbolt our engine and let it sink to the bottom of the sea and then drift wherever the, wherever the current takes us. That's a great picture of backsliding because it, that's what happens. We tend to get rid of the spiritual. We dump the spiritual before we dump any of the other mess. We ought to, instead of, instead of that, it ought to be reversed. What can I get rid of in my life? This is too much. This is too much. Uh, do you realize that there's a thing called too much? Anybody ever, we're all, we're all, Familiar with this concept, right? If you're not, try adding too much salt to your next recipe. Try adding too much pepper. Try adding too much garlic. I love garlic, but, bro, there is a limit. Okay? You can put too much of something, and it overwhelms the rest. So we have to look at our lives and say, you know what? This is too much. This is too much. I'm going to get rid of this and slowly work our way back to necessity, which is our engine that keeps us going. That's our spiritual lives. So don't, don't fall into that. Don't do that. You know, we got a lot. Of, we get a lot of strength from our church, from our church family. We're, we're encouraging one another. All that can't help if we're not here to be encouraged. Or if we're not watching to be encouraged. If you separate yourself from the spiritual, how will you then be encouraged to go forward for the Lord? You won't. You'll be adrift. 
Satan is the divider in chief. He knows how effective it is. Our country has had a good long while of being divided and disassembled right before the eyes of the American public. Very much evident all around us. Well, guess what? You can only take off so many bolts. You can only, you can only divide so much and it falls apart. It falls apart. And it's just crumbled. It's a mess. It's a cobbler. It's a mess. Very tasty mess, but it's a mess. If God's people are not faithful in, in attendance, and I've mentioned this before, there could come a day when they no longer have a church to attend. I find in the Bible that in the last days, they're seeking to and fro throughout the earth trying to find the word of God, and they can't find it. What happened to the churches? What happened to the Bibles? What happened to the Bible studies? What happened to the worship services? Eventually, if the powers that be remain, there will be nothing left to speak of of God in our country. When everything came from him. And that's why God's not blessing the United States. It's anti-God. It's anti-Christ. It's, anti, it's becoming anti-Israel from within. That's never a good thing. When God says, I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse, those, curse them that curse thee, that's not good when you start seeing a lot of what inside of America, our own country, people are siding with those terrorists that are trying to take life and property because they feel entitled to it. It's no more than a spirit of entitlement, which we already know is running rampant in our country and the world. Now, Verse 3, we find one of the temporal blessings, offerings, and sacrificings when God people, God's people are good to God, he's good to them, and he's good to them whether they're not, whether they are or not. But remember to be faithful in our stewardship, especially in the day of trouble. Uh, usually a day of trouble will inc incorporate some financial pain as well. It says, remember all thy offerings. Salah, that means to pause, to to weigh it out, to, to think about what you're, what, what you're reading, what you're hearing. Don't be afraid of Salah. It's not some weird thing. It's there for a reason. If God's got it in the Bible, it's there for a reason. Stop and think about what is being said is what it really boils down to. So if we're not faithful with the unrighteous mammon, we'll not be given the true riches that God has in store for us. Verse 4, seek your counsel from the Bible first. Weigh decisions in times of confusion by the word of God first, not by YouTube, not by Facebook, not by Instagram, not by Meta AI, not by all these different things, but by the Bible. We are not to stand in the counsel of the ungodly. We're not, we're not supposed to be receiving ungodly counsel because they will always defer to the world's philosophy on all of it, Where, wherein no matter what has gone on, no matter how wrong you've been, you're never wrong. You're, you, you're perfectly innocent. It's them. Go do what you feel like. Do you know how many homes could have stayed together had they went to the Bible first? Had they went to the preacher instead of the psychologist or, 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 or the therapist that, that told them that you're not compatible anymore? And, I, you know, that, that's a, a load of garbage. 
If you are ever compatible, you always will be. What happens is that we, over time, develop our own personal issues. And those issues oftentimes don't go together. They are not compatible. It is the issues that are not compatible, not the people. Because you all started off compatible. You all started off loving each other. Now what's changed down the road? Well, that's what's changed. Your issues and my issues are bad. So they won't go together. They won't mix like the two oceans that stop and they don't mix. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen, but I, I, love, uh, I love to see that. And, and uh, recently just shared, uh, shared something to that effect. Uh, and, and so, um, but we have to understand that we have to deal with the issues. When we deal with the issues, and that's each person because it takes two. If, if one person just has the issue and the other person doesn't, then it, it, it'll fall right over. But when it's those two things that are knocking heads, it's not going to do it. So we each have to figure out what that is for us and tear it down and get back down. And then compatibility will automatically return. Because now the thing that was keeping us from coming together is no longer there. Now we can. How many marriages have ended because they said, you're not compatible anymore. You just need to go and, and, and go do your own thing. Find your happiness. Whatever makes you happy. <clears throat> Trash. It's a covenant. It's an everlasting covenant until death separates you. That's what it is. That's why it's not to be done ill-advisedly. That's why it's not to be rushed into. That's why you don't run and get married on El by Elvis on the weekend. Oh, man, did I do that? It's a mess. Seek our counsel from the Bible. Weigh our decisions and whatever it is by the Bible. And I often preach on rejoicing. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Good and bad times. Rejoicing in bad times will help you find encouragement in the Lord. Just look at Paul and Silas in the prison at midnight. Need I say more? Nope. Party broke out. An earthquake happened. Everybody's bands fell off. And that included everybody that was with them in the prison. You mean God didn't just drop off Paul and Silas's stuff and leave the other people chained? No. Even the people that had nothing to do with Paul and Silas's song and prayer and praise service, they got their bands loosed and their doors were opened. God was saying something. God was saying something. We can do that. We can find those things, okay? Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You know, we need to understand that when the heavens seem to be silent or made of brass, the Lord both sees and hears. He knows where we are. He knows our need before we even ask it. There is not one prayer request that will be offered up in, in just, a, uh, just a couple minutes. Not one prayer request that he doesn't already know you're going to say. He knows about the ones that are going to come last minute. He knows the one, oh, I almost forgot. He, he knows all that already. He already knows what's going to come down in our, prayer, in, in our prayer request time. Before we ever ask. When you wait on the Lord, you renew your strength in Isaiah 40. I'm not going to read it just for sake of time. I want to move down. Uh, but we need to, in verse 7, 8, place your faith in the Lord, whom you cannot see instead of the temporal things which can be. We look at what we see. 
That's, that's what we gauge everything by. That's why God gets left out so much of our lives because it's not something that we see to remind us. And so when we see that, oh, oh man, you know what? If you always walk out of your car and you, and, and you got an issue with your tire, oh, guess what? Oh, I need more air. It's there to remind you because now it looks like a pan, it's sitting on a pancake. Well, if I'm going to get anywhere, I got to I got to give attention to that. I got to give heed to that. I got to I got to make sure I got to take care of that before I can get down the road. It's something that we see, and those are the things that even in our busyness, we tend to even forget the things that are even around us until we see it again and oh man, I need to do that. I forgot about doing that. So, it it makes it that much worse when the things that we don't see the eternal things that we don't we don't give enough attention to or thought to we have to build that into our lives to be able to make sure we're stopping uh, every however often it is and just take thought of the eternal think take thought of it take thought of it put a reminder on your phone when you, if you need help, I'll, I'll help you later. Just, just to see me, I'll help you set your alarm. All right, put an alarm on your phone every day, the whole calendar year. Same time every day. It goes off, and just all you need is just the title. Think about something eternal. Get it in your mind. Every day, it's going to be a habit. You'll see yourself focusing more every day on the eternal because you're reminded about it, okay? That'll be a help to you. Also, uh, uh, we need to trust the Lord with all of our heart. We got to do the best that we can. Uh, You know, rest in the fact that he's going to hear us, he's going to save So we need to know that God's good all the time, even in our ups, our downs, all of that. Good times, bad times, he's there with us and for us. And it's important that we realize that. And I'll uh, I'll, I'll leave with this uh, verse here in Psalm chapter 9, verse 9 and 10, last scriptures. The Lord will also, uh, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble, and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. How awesome. Seek the Lord. He's not going to forsake you, and especially if you're seeking him. The primary thing with seeking something is you want to find it. That's, that's, that's the whole purpose of seeking is to find. The end result of seeking should be finding. And it's always unfortunate when we, say, when we seek and we don't find. You ever had that happen? You lose a set of keys maybe or you... You you lost a, you lost something you you put it on the you you know you you had it you put it down and it sat there and then all of a sudden now it's gone and you can't find it anywhere. Well, now I got to get another one. I got to do something else. I got to I have to have that, so I've got to go on and get something else. But the point of seeking is finding. So seek him. He will not forsake you. He will. He's not going to do that. And so I just wanted to encourage us tonight uh, with those things because they're important. As a reminder that, yes, the times of trouble are there. They're going to be. It's unavoidable. It's part of life. But we need to stay in a good mindset when we get there and seek him. And he will be found. And he will help. He will save, and he will deliver. Brother Aaron, I'll have you come at this time and 
uh, go ahead and start our prayer request time.